Uh, 16 Houston through Hawaii, over. Right, Gordy, you were five by, and this is the most spectacular view I've ever seen. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 22 hours uh, 28 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, the uh, handover and mission control between uh, the two flight control teams has been completed. Uh, the uh, team uh, of uh, flight controllers headed by uh, Gene Krantz uh, are now all on board. Our CAPCOM uh, for this shift uh, will be astronaut uh, Tony England. We presently show Apollo uh, 16 at a, an altitude of 96,103 nautical miles uh, from Earth and uh, traveling at a velocity of uh, 5,399 feet per second. Our clock in mission control uh, shows that uh, we're approximately 31 minutes away from uh, time of crew wake up. At uh, 22 hours at uh, 28 minutes uh, continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 22 hours uh, 57 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Our displays uh, presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of uh, 97,619 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,334 feet per second. We're about uh, two minutes away now from uh, scheduled time of crew wake up. Uh, we'll uh, leave the line up at this time as, uh, as a means of picking up uh, conversation as it transpires. We're at uh, 22 hours, uh, 58 minutes ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, 23 hours, uh, 3 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, we're still standing by uh, awaiting uh, Tony England's call up uh, to the crew of Apollo 16. We presently show Apollo 16 at uh, a distance of 97,906 nautical miles away from the Earth. Uh, velocity now reading... 5,322 feet per second. Standing by now, uh, waiting uh, Capcom uh, Tony England's call uh, to the crew of Apollo 16. And this is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 23 hours, 4 minutes into the mission. Apollo 16, Houston. Apollo 16, Houston. Glad there, Houston. How you doing? Hey, you sound good. Good morning up there. How are you doing? Great. Good. All your systems look sure good. Uh, good show. Everything looks fine up there from down here. Oh, yes. Sure beats work. <laughs> How are your comrades doing? Stir. I'd hum something for you to wake you up, but I got a tin ear. Uh, we'll make it, Tony. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 23 hours, 9 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, Apollo 16, uh, presently 98,222 nautical miles away from the Earth. Uh, the uh, velocity now reading uh, 5,309 uh, feet per second. When the Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 23 hours, uh, 16 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16, now 98,558 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of 5,295 uh, feet per second. Uh, very little conversation with Apollo uh, 16 uh, thus far. Uh, however, uh, the wake-up call has been placed. And we'll stand by and continue to monitor. Uh, we're at uh, 23 hours, uh, 16 minutes of uh, ground elapsed time, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, 16, over. Houston, 16. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, I'd like to give you our uh, post-sleep report here yesterday. Uh, the commander... Uh, ate a sandwich and his orange juice and was in his suit. 
and all of his meals the day one. And uh, his uh, ERD is 22028. He did, he had seven hours sleep. Best ever in space flight. No medication. Three voids. 34, 20, 18. Fluid intake. Total 21 ounces. Over. Okay, we got that, Charlie. Okay, for Ken, he had uh, from uh, field C everything but the pecans, and he ate his sandwich and his orange juice. His TRD is 15030. Uh, six hours uh, in an eight hour period, but he was awake every once every hour. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. We're uh, switching uh, hominies at this time. That's Charlie D. Uh, Charlie Duke with the uh, post sleep report. Three one and the next one is lost. And uh, thirteen ounces total intake. Okay. Okay, uh, Charlie. Sorry, Tony. Uh, Charlie, could you uh, say yeah, the voids ahead. again? Uh, could you say the voids again on Ken? One was timed uh, 41, 41 seconds, the other was lost uh, due to a malfunctioning bag. And uh, we got uh, on me now for uh, my meal. I had the sandwich and the orange juice that was in the soup. For uh, meal C, I had half the spaghetti, all the ambrosia, and the cocoa. My PRD is uh, 21040. I got about five hours sleep. Uh, two voids of 20 and 25 with about a uh, 20 ounce uh, fluid intake over. Okay, we got it all. Sounds like you all slept pretty good. Well, I, it was off and on for me, I must admit. I tell you, I'd be so excited I wouldn't sleep at all. It's Apollo Control Houston, uh, 23 hours, uh, 32 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16, now 99,379 nautical miles away from the Earth. Now traveling at a speed of 5,261 feet per second. Houston with charging battery A. And on that food, uh, Tony had my apricot cubes. I just ate them. Okay, John. Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Okay, on that uh, fluid consumption there, the numbers you gave uh, were in ounces. Uh, could you verify that's ounces and not bags? Say that again, uh, Tony. And the uh, fluid you've uh, consumed, the drinks, uh, you gave the numbers in ounces, and I guess the, the blank here is listed in uh, number of bags and partial bags, and they just want to verify that, in fact, uh, the number you gave was in ounces, and, uh, and also to check and see what unit you want to use for the rest of the mission on that, so uh, everybody will have it straight. Okay, uh, we'll use, uh, we'd like to use ounces, and uh, that's what we'll go with. Okay. And that's what I read. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Uh, the uh, menu side of it, uh, the things that are in the menus uh, are in, uh, of course, bags over. Okay, we understand. It's 
Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 23 hours, 42 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, that was Lunar Module Pilot uh, Charlie Duke uh, talking to Capcom. Uh, Tony England here in Mission Control, uh, clarifying one point in the uh, uh, post-sleep uh, report. We presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 99,923 nautical miles from the Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,238 feet per second. Okay, uh, we can see the Earth out there. And uh, it's uh, getting a good deal smaller. It's about the same size as the moon, almost out the other one. And Africa is clear this morning, at least... Uh, the part that we can see, which is uh, what usually clear, right around the, from the Canaries uh, on. Very good. We've got you about uh, a little over. You just passed 100,000 miles on our chart here. I would guess we're about 100,000 miles now, yeah. Yeah, sounds like a milestone. They say you're only 14 miles off, John. You're going to have to recalibrate your eyeball. Okay, uh, from our point of view, you only got a little more than half an Earth. Uh, that's right, we forgot you're kind of handicapped. Right. Go, G. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 23 hours, uh, 51 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 now 100,355 nautical miles away from the Earth and, and now traveling at a speed of 5,220 uh, feet per second. It's uh, been a very uh, quiet day thus far for the crew of Apollo 16. Uh, we've heard from them uh, with their post-sleep uh, uh, report. And aside from a... Uh, Brief commentary by John Young on uh, his view of the Earth. Uh, we've heard uh, little else at this point, uh, but we'll stand by and continue to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 23 hours, uh, 52 minutes, uh, ground elapsed time. Ken Houston. Okay, I've got a system status report whenever you're comfortable and like to hear it. There's nothing to write down on that. Okay, can we uh, stand by one? Sure, no I hurry at all. Know. Okay, just give me a call when you're ready. All righty. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 24 hours, uh, 5 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo uh, 16, now 101,035 nautical miles away from the Earth. Uh, velocity now reading uh, 5,193 feet per second. Uh, during this uh, period of, uh, of relative calm and quiet, uh, we'll pass along a brief update to our status uh, on the crew report of last night of a... a of particles emitting from the lunar module in the uh, vicinity of the uh, aluminum closeout panel, which covers the uh, uh, mylar uh, insulation over the RCA system number or uh, system A. The panel in question is uh, 50-56 aluminum, 0 0.004 inches thick, with a 0 0.001 coating of white silicone paint. The paint is applied and baked uh, for one half hour at uh, 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, Grumman Aircraft Engineering uh, has been uh, checking the paperwork on the panel to see if its processing uh, has been different uh, than that before, uh, making a thermal analysis to see if the mission could possibly be affected by the situation. Uh, the analysis shows the uh, flaking will not affect the mission. Uh, preparing a test plan to conduct on a similar panel uh, that is being uh, flown to Grumman uh, from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, tests uh, uh, would be expected to include such things as wiping the finish with different solvents uh, and then to uh, simulate uh, flight vacuum and temperature conditions in an altitude uh, chamber. 
The paint on this uh, panel is applied uh, to eight panels on each side of the uh, lunar module. The coating is applied to handle the thermal conditions on the moon in the event uh, of a uh, T plus uh, 24 hour launch uh, when the sun angle of the moon would be higher. We're at uh, 24 hours or uh, seven minutes of uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we'll continue to monitor uh, uh, for any conversations uh, with the crew of Apollo 16. This is Apollo Control, Houston. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 24 hours uh, 14 minutes of uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 now 101,502 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,173 feet per second. Uh, we presently show the uh, spacecraft weight at uh, 103,078 uh, pounds. We'll stand by and continue to monitor uh, uh, any conversations uh, that uh, might take place uh, between the crew of Apollo 16 and our Capcom and uh, Mission Control, uh, Tony England. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Tony? Yeah, go ahead, Ken. Okay, uh, I'm about to finish up on my coffee here. If it's something I don't need to write down, I'll just listen to what you have to say as you, as you read it off. Okay, that sounds good. On the system status, your RCS, uh, everything looks fine. You're 27 pounds ahead on your usage. You must have a pretty light hand on the throttle there. Okay, and on the ECS, the failure mode's probably in the control electronic. The valve was driving at a max rate. That's uh, 12 seconds uh, full open to full close and they saw that on TM by the flow rate. They don't recommend making any uh, sensor changes since that doesn't seem to be the problem. And thermal runs are being made here at this time to determine the setting for lunar orbit. They don't anticipate any problems with it. Okay, I, I uh, kept watching it uh, since we've set it. We haven't touched that thing now for a long time, and uh, maybe I just haven't caught any of the extremes, but it looks like it's been holding uh, nicely between about uh, 45 and 50. All right, we concur. We we don't think you're going to have it to uh, touch it until you go to the dark side. Okay, and on the SPS, Normally during uh, SPS cool down, uh, during transmitter coast, the helium in the SPS oxidizer tanks is absorbed by the oxidizer, causing a decrease in uh, oxidizer tank pressure. Your transducer hasn't indicated this, and uh, there's, there may be a problem with that transducer. We've got a procedure change that I'll give to you later in your uh, flight plan update uh, prior to the mid-course two that will allow them to, to check that uh, transducer. Right now, it looks uh, as per flight plan. Okay, and on your uh, DSE tape, uh, Hank had a chance to take a look at it. Sound, it said it sounds fine. Uh, Dick will be in a little later and, and listen also. So everything looks good for, for the operations in lunar orbit. And everything else looks great. It's kind of nice not to have much to say here. Sure isn't like the Sims. Yeah, I hope we pulled the last Sim. You're right. I got a little... Yeah, just said it all. That's right. I went through the news. I don't know whether you guys over your coffee would like to read the newspaper. But I've got all the, the news that's fit to print. 
I don't really have much to say. Uh, a great piece here is in the world of art. One of uh, Vincent Van Gogh's best was stolen from the Stan San Diego Art Gallery as part of a display that was named Out of Sight. And I've got a input from Dottie here for Charlie. Okay, uh, she says your your five bird eggs have hatched, and so you've got uh, five new healthy neighbors. Oh, great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and on the flight plan update, uh, we have five items, and uh, there's no hurry to get them up there. Uh, whenever you're ready to take them and uh, can write the stuff down, I'll send them on up. Okay, why don't you give us another uh, 10 minutes or so? Okay, that'd be fine. Probably looks like any uh, any bachelor's pad. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 24 hours, uh, 22 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, Apollo 16 now 101,860 nautical miles away from the Earth, and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,100 to 59 feet per second. Okay, stand by a second, Charlie. Uh, Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Okay, on a flight plan update. If you could dig out your uh, CSM updates, uh, uh, we'll make a change to a couple of procedures in there. Did you want the flight plan or the update book? Okay, this will be in the update book, this first one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go to the section on flight plan updates. Uh, it has the uh, EMP programs. Okay, we'd like you to add uh, an, a last step to each of the four EMP pro procedures. So that'd make a fourth step on the uh, short D23 and a seventh step on the manual range input, etc. Okay, uh, stand by, Tony. Uh, they must have had a handover. You were cut out. Uh, start over again, please. Okay, you understand. All right, in the flight plan update section uh, on the four EMP programs, we'd like you to add a fourth uh, our correction, a final, a termination procedure to each of the four programs. So on the shortened P23, we'd have a step four, which reads, verb 25, noun 26, enter, and then the four registers enter all ball. our correction, three registers enter all balls. Okay, uh, copy four step for P23 is verb 25, now 26 enter, uh, all balls and all registers. Okay, and on the next program, the manual range input, uh, step seven would be the same thing. Uh, copy manual range input, step seven, to verb 25, now 26 enter, uh, all balls. Okay, and on the optics angles to body angles, We'll add a step seven, and it'll be the same uh, as before. Okay, 
copy all balls. Okay, and on the jet monitor program, it'll be a step six, the same thing. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the purpose for these were was to protect the e-memory uh, from other programs. Okay. Okay, uh, the next change is to your SPS burn rules, so if you can get that card. Go ahead. Okay, on the fuel oxidizer pressure, it should read, uh, or it does read greater than 115. We change it to read 124 for oxidizer, 110 for fuel. Okay, uh, pressure greater than 115 is changed to 124 oxidizer, 110 fuel. Uh, that's correct. And in the fuel to oxidizer delta P, it reads less than 20 psi. We'd like to change that to 35 psi oxidizer greater than fuel, or 5 psi oxidizer less than fuel. Okay, copy 35, oxidizer greater than fuel, 5, uh, oxidizer less than fuel. Okay, and uh, the final part of that is in the tight constraints there in the box. It says uh, greater than 160 and greater than 80. We'd like to change that to greater than 168 oxidizer and greater than 153 fuel. And I guess on that tight constraints also, it's the uh, the chamber pressure. It says uh, greater than uh, 80 for the tight constraints. Okay, okay and that's the end of that procedure. Uh, note here, it, this assumes a, a good oxidizer transducer. And there may be a, a problem that it's hung up, and uh, we'll have a, a little later change in the uh, mid-course two burn procedure. And from this, we'll be able to tell what what where the problem is. I'll get that up to you as soon as they sorted it out here. Okay, and there are two notes here. Uh, for Ken, a reminder to watch the UV film consumption. Magazine Oscar Oscar, he's right on the budget now, and there's no pad. Right, and there's no way to cut a film out. I understand. Uh, uh, we're, we're aware it'd be a tight, Tony. Uh, if you see a slip behind, I, I guess I don't know what to do about it. You'll have to come up with a recommendation of what what other photo to delete. Okay. Well, we just thought we'd let you know that you had a two-frame uh, pad, and uh, we've already used it. You mean we've taken two frames we weren't supposed to? I don't understand the note here. That was the note I got. Maybe it was used up before before they loaded it or something. I'll find out. As far as I know, Tony, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, there's no misunderstanding uh, on our part about what it is we're supposed to do because uh, we took only those frames that were selected because we are aware of the tight budget. Okay, I understand. And, uh, we might be off a little bit on the numbers we give you because you know that counter is kind of gross and it's easy to get off by a by a, a number or so. Particularly when you start at the low end. All right, I understand. I'm, I'm usually off by more than a number. Okay, and uh, a last note. We'd like you to take a look when you get a chance at that uh, the LEM thermal surface and uh, see if you notice any changes or can give us any more work on it. We don't really anticipate a problem there. Uh, it turns out, looking back, there was a history of one batch of bad paint, and they sort of think it's uh, just the paint blistering up. And it doesn't seem to be on, All a, right. on a surface that'll give us a real bad problem. Okay, we're ready to bring up the high gain if you got some angles for us. Okay, I'll get them.
Okay, we'd like you to stand by for 10 minutes on that high gain. All right. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 24 hours, uh, 39 minutes ground elapsed time. Apollo 16, now 102,739 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a velocity of uh, 5,123 feet per second. Uh, Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Okay, on the high gain, uh, we'd like you to select pitch, minus 40, yaw, plus 90, and the beam width, and narrow. And we'll uh, give you a cue to switch over to the high gain. Okay, you got them selected. Uh, you going to cue us, you say? Uh, that's affirmative. We'll give you a cue. Uh, Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Okay, we'd like you to go reacquisition now on wheel command. Say again. We'd like you to go reacquisition now. Okay, you got react and again. Okay. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, to discuss that uh, thermal layer of grass that we got uh, growing on the, uh, growing just outside the uh, docking target. It's uh, thinned out a pretty good bit since last night. I think it's gone somewhere. But there are a lot of these little uh, square uh, rectangular strips about uh, oh, up to two inches long. I say one, it must be three inches long. And, and they just sort of look like they're glued. Somebody glued a bunch of strips of grass onto that uh, thermal shield. But most of them are gone. Where it was 100% coverage before, it looks like it's about 50% uh, coverage now. Okay, we copy that. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 24 hours, uh, 48 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, that was uh, John Young uh, des describing the current status of the particles on the lunar module. Uh, we show Apollo uh, 16 at uh, 103,197 nautical miles away from the Earth, uh, traveling at a speed of 5,106 feet per second. Uh, Tony, are you folks ready for us to press on with a little uh, film cycling? Uh, stand by a second, Ken. Okay. Okay, Ken Houston. Go. Okay, we'd like you to go ahead on the uh, uh, film cycling down to the Misfin Q and then call us back. Welcome. Okay, Houston. How about a cue? Okay, stand by a second. Okay, Ken, go on and with your procedure. Okay, uh, I'll read these out as I go through them. All right. And the only thing that uh, looked uh, a little different is when I got down to the step where it said uh, pan camera mode to standby, uh, it already was. I guess that's just uh, an oversight. Okay. Okay, that's no problem.
John, what's the thumb wheel setting? Okay, Tony, can you read me now? I'm on box. Yes, you sound fine. Alrighty. Mapping camera is coming on. Stand by. Mark. Would you like to have the pan camera self-test simultaneously, or would you like to do it sequentially? Okay, we'd like it simultaneously. You hear it. For the self-test, hitting self-test, mark. Barber pole now. You can hear uh, Command Module Pilot uh, Ken Mattingly checking out the pan camera and the mapping camera on board. Uh, with the uh, Mission Control Center in Houston. Uh, this is uh, Apollo Control Houston at 24 hours, 55 minutes of ground elapsed time. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 24 hours, uh, 56 minutes ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 now 103,540 nautical miles away from Earth. Flag on the pan camera mode, talk back, and that took about 45 seconds as opposed to a minute. Okay, we copy that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, hand camera power to off. Okay. Okay, I'm getting ready to take the mapping camera to off center. Okay, I've Mark. got two minutes here. You got a good watch. All right. It's a Mickey special. Okay, there's our 30 seconds. Okay. Take the smack power off. Yeah, that's what you call the good time. Okay, Tony, we're going to Omni Bravo and selecting the turn of high game. Yeah, then Ox TV to off. Okay, sounds good, Chuck. Yes, please, Chuck. Back to BTT uh, intercom. Okay, Tony, uh, we got uh, Delta Slim CM Delta P of point eight, okay. and uh, John's on the uh, biomed now. Okay, we copy that. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 24 hours, uh, 58 minutes, uh, ground elapsed time. The uh, crew of Apollo 16 uh, following very closely the timeline and the uh, flight plan. Apollo 16 Commander uh, John Young has uh, just donned a biomedical harness. This reported by uh, Lunar Module Pilot uh, Charles Duke. At uh, 24 hours, 59 minutes, Apollo 16 is 103,686 nautical miles away from the Earth. Hey, John, you're giving us some great TV there. What did you say? What did you say, Tony? I said we're getting some great TV down here. Looks good. Is that one of your tapes? Ah, uh, so that's a tape. Sorry about that. It's Apollo Control, Houston, at 25 hours, 7 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, that exchange between Tony England and Apollo 16. Uh, the re reference was to a replay, which is taking place in the Mission Control Center of uh, the uh, tape of yesterday evening's television. Uh, this uh, picture is being studied by uh, some of the flight controllers uh, here who had not had an opportunity to see it before, uh, along with uh, Dr. Robert R. Gilruth, uh, who uh, is the former director of the uh, Manned Spacecraft Center. We're at uh, 
25 hours, 8 minutes of ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 now 104,125 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,068 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 25 hours, 11 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, very little conversation uh, taking place uh, between our Capcom, uh, Tony England, and the Mission Control Center and the crew of Apollo 16. It is uh, during uh, this time frame, however, that uh, the crew of Apollo 16 uh, should be performing the uh, electrophoresis uh, demonstration. Uh, and during uh, this demonstration, the crew uh, will attempt uh, on board to prove the uh, uh, higher uh, purity uh, particle migrations in zero G. Uh, three uh, mylar tubes uh, containing microspheres uh, are used for this activity. Uh, the tubes are uh, uh, positively and negatively charged at either end. Uh, the movement uh, of the microspheres is uh, then studied. Uh, this uh, movement is documented by means of the 70 millimeter Hasselblad camera. This is a demonstration uh, that was also performed uh, during Apollo 14. We're at uh, 25 hours, 12 minutes of ground elapsed time, uh, continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, uh, 16. Go ahead. Okay, uh, <laughs> instructions I have there are to press on through that hold and go on down to just before starting the camera and then hold again and give us a call. Okay. Apollo 16, Houston. Hey, it over. Okay, at uh, your convenience, when you get a chance, we'd like you to read out... Uh, all quads, uh, the RCS uh, propellant quantity uh, for our correlation with uh, the TM. Okay, uh, A is uh, 90, D is 96, Z is 96, D is uh, over 100, about 101 or 2. Okay, we copy that. Houston. Go ahead, Charlie. Houston, uh, we're down in the step to, uh, before Kent turns on the electrophoresis power. Where do you want us to hold that over? Okay, we'd like you to hold just prior to starting the camera. Okay, just prior to start the camera. Rod, on the next page. Okay, how about uh, telling us where we're going here? Because okay, you know, it's I, I got to turn this thing on, and uh, I'd like to have in my mind what it is we're going to do. Rod, it's no big deal. The uh, note here was, at that point, you're supposed to observe the current meters, and if there's no indication of a current flow in any tube, uh, you tap the box gently. Uh, along uh, the axis uh, parallel with the face and then you allow the whole, uh, the whole unit to uh, lie motionless for an additional three to five minutes before proceeding. They're afraid there may be a bubble in one of the tubes and uh, you don't get a current. Okay, well actually there's a bubble in each tube. Say that again? Actually there's a bubble in each tube. And it's, uh, each tube has a bubble. They are in exactly the same place. They're lined up in a row. And they are directly over meter number three. And the bubbles are about, uh, oh, uh, eighth of an inch in diameter. Okay, the PI says that's okay, and we should go ahead and proceed. Okay, now. The question that you had for me was that if, if 
in any of the meters. Do not go into the green when we turn the power on. And you want me to tap the box and then do what? Okay, the instructions were to tap the box gently, allow the unit to remain motionless for an additional three to five minutes, and then proceed. Okay, and this time, if we don't get the uh, meters into the green, we proceed anyhow. Is that correct? Uh, according to the instructions, that's correct. Already. Follow control, Houston. Uh, 25 hours, uh, 27 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, that uh, was Ken Mattingly, command module pilot of Apollo 16, uh, discussing procedures uh, for the uh, electrophoresis uh, demonstration with Capcom uh, Tony England here in Mission Control. Uh, we now show Apollo 16 at 105,057 nautical miles away from the Earth and traveling at a speed of 5,032 feet per second. Okay, Tony, uh, turns out that meter number one is uh, just barely into the red. Meter number two didn't come up quite into the red. Meter number three is about a needle width below the red. Okay, uh, we'd like you to go on with the experiment. I've uh, jiggled it a little bit, and uh, I'm going to let it settle here for a second, and then we'll start. We'll give you a mark when we start it. Roger, we concur. Okay, Houston, we have uh, started the experiment, and uh, as soon as we got it rotating, uh, got it running, and I turned according to the decal on the box, which is uh, counterclockwise half rotation. And as soon as I did, the uh, orange film disappeared, and I see uh, white uh, particles coming through, uh, coming through a stream. It looks much like a, a uh, it's like latex. Okay, we copy that. Any difference in rates between the different tubes? Yeah, uh, well, the first thing that happens as soon as I open it, I got a big blob of this stuff inside of the, it's like the inside of the window here, between the, where it shows the decal on the outside says, uh, sample one and two. Uh, got a big, couple of big blobs in there. Don't some bad calm right there in the middle uh, when you were describing the rates in the different and the three tubes of the, of the white material. If you could say a little bit of that again, it might help. Okay, it's moving uh, much more rapidly than I had anticipated it would, Tony. Uh, right now, the uh, number two sample is uh, leading by about a nose. It's just crossed the one, two, three, four, fifth ring inscribed on that center tube. The number three sample has just crossed the fourth one. The number one sample has just crossed the fifth one now, and number two is about halfway between five and six. Number 
three sample is uh, maintaining uh, a very cohesive shape. It looks like a little uh, uh, cylinder with a pointed nose on it, and it's maintaining its uh, white consistency. And it's going, in, I can guess at the length of the uh, group of particles in there that's uh, maintaining a solid appearance is about the width of one of these lines. Then uh, it tails out to a uh, very diffuse, uh, gaseous, uh, just a swirl material behind it that goes all the way back to the lexium. The faster samples are diffusing much more rapidly, and they have a little nose on them, which is uh, very thin and, and leads ahead of the uh, larger mass of material. And they form sort of a cone shape. And they are about uh, two and a half to three ring lengths uh, in length. And I'm talking about the distance between the uh, sets of rings. And uh, they both appear to be diffusing about the same amount. The number two sample is really starting to break up now. It's starting to twist. Uh, looks like it's taking on a corkscrew appearance as it approaches the yellow line. And uh, it's approaching the yellow line, and now number one is approaching one ring from us. I'm going to have the reversal switch. Okay. Say there is no difference in diffusion between one and two. Well, there wasn't when we started. Uh, now, now, now that we've hit the reversal switch, uh, I guess all bets are off. Uh, the uh, <laughs> they've just really, uh, really broken up at number two, and then uh, number one is holding together a little better. They really looked uh, very, very similar except that just as it crossed the last ring before the yellow ring, number two started to get an elongated nose on the point, and it was starting to twist, and I say it was looking like a corkscrew. And, uh, and then about the same time, when uh, just about the time I had the reversal switch, the uh, sample in number one did the same thing. The sample in number three is doing entirely uh, a different operation. It retained sort of a bullet shape all the way down as far as it went, and now uh, that we've reversed it, the uh, pointed end, which was on the right side, in the direction of motion, has now become a flat blunt end, and it's picking up a, a kind of an arrow-shaped head on the left side as it goes back towards the uh, container. But it's still uh, retaining its cohesiveness. The uh, sample number two uh, just really got uh, all diff diffused and spread around. And number one is holding together a little bit better. It, it's starting to take shape that looks very much like number three. In fact, the trailing edge, uh, that's the one on the right side now, for sample number one, has uh, just about caught up and looks very much like uh, sample number three, except that you can tell that some of the material in sample one has been diffused. Outstanding. Now we're about to approach the uh, original end. Uh, do you want me to reverse it again or? Uh, what do you suggest at this point? Yeah, Ken, we'd like you to reverse it again. Okay, and I'll do that when the first uh, large portion of the sample reaches the uh, Lexan manifold. Is that okay? That's uh, some of the diffused material will already go inside. Okay, that sounds good. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, that is Ken Mattingly uh, describing uh, the movement inside the uh, three tubes uh, for the electrophoresis demonstration. We're at uh, 25 hours, uh, 37 minutes into the mission. Apollo 16, uh, 105,559 nautical miles out from the Earth. First it and then reversed it when the pointed end of sample number three reached the first marked ring before reaching the Lexan manifold. Okay. And it's starting to snake now. It, it's, uh, these little blobs don't seem to take this reversal so well. Another thing that was a little different on that first, uh, when I after I reversed it, sample number one, I mentioned all three had bubbles that were right together when we started. Uh, the bubble on, uh, on them all passed over to the extreme right end except that number one, when we reversed the samples, it remained over in the right end, and uh, numbers uh, two and three 
traveled with the uh, material. Okay, copy that. Okay, Tony, uh, number two has reached the uh, end again. I'm going to reverse it for the last time. Okay. It's reversed at this time, Mark it. Okay. Number two is completely, uh, looks like a, an emulsion. Uh, number one uh, still has a central core that's holding together, and number three is doing a good job of staying together. It's uh, diffused very little. Okay, we copy that. Okay, and at the end of this, it looks to me like it's so diffused that at the end of this run, when we get it back, I'll just uh, go ahead and secure it. Yeah, Ken, I think they're going to have fun analyzing that one. I think they got their work cut out for them. Are there any questions that you might want to get resolved that maybe I were obvious to me but weren't obvious to you uh, before we put it all away? We're going to be closing down here in a couple minutes. Okay, uh, the PI is back there and uh, hopefully he's working on some questions. Uh, Ken Houston? Go ahead. Okay, uh, one, you said you, you uh, tapped the box there at the beginning to try to get rid of the bubbles. How long did you wait before you started? Uh, I know you gave a mark, but uh, we'd like to verify that. Uh, between the time we tapped the bubbles and the time we started the experiment? Uh, that's affirmative. Is that the time frame? Okay. That time frame was, uh, I would guess, is about a minute to me, because when I tapped it, I just couldn't get up the move. I'd already... I'd already tapped that thing once before uh, for the bubbles. And because as soon as we unpacked it, we saw the bubbles out there. And I banged it a little bit to try and see if I could get them to move and didn't have any luck at all. So uh, we didn't wait any three or five minutes. It was about two minutes, I guess. Okay, we copy that. Two minutes. And on the tube one, did you notice any uh, separation of the two sizes? Not unless that's what this diffuse uh, and uh, central uh, feature turns out to be. Uh, the the uh, dark, uh, oh, let me rephrase that, the higher concentration of material that makes it look more solid, if that's a large particle and the diffuse material is the finer particles, then I would say that perhaps there was a separation of small particles from larger ones in tube number two just about the time I reversed it just starting to show up, and number one perhaps the same, and number three I would say if that's the proper interpretation that there was no appreciable separation of anything. And I'm not sure that number one ever exhibited the, uh, some of the symptoms that number two did. I can't tell you right now which of uh, these tubes splurted these blobs of particles out of the wind either. All right, we copy that. Uh, we uh, I sort of expected from the information we got here that one would be the one that uh, split up in the two sizes, but uh, I guess we'll have to look at that later. Okay, uh, again, I'm not sure what this uh, little burst of material that got out of the window might, uh, might mean. Maybe we lost some of the stuff from one of them. Okay. That's all the questions they had here. At least the bugs didn't eat the particles. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 25 hours, uh, 48 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we've had a, a continuing discussion uh, with uh, Command Module Pilot uh, Ken Mattingly on the uh, electrophoresis uh, demonstration. We now show Apollo 16 at uh, 106,097 nautical miles out from the Earth and uh, traveling at a velocity of uh, 4,992 feet per second. Houston, did you get that? That was the magazine you used up to frame 55 on that experiment. 
Okay, Uncle Uncle 55, thank you. Roger. Apollo 16, Houston. Go ahead, over. Okay, at uh, your convenience, we've got the uh, change to your SPS burn procedure. Okay, you got to stay up on that one. Uh, things are kind of busy right now. Right, understand. No hurry at all. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 26 hours, uh, 13 minutes, uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, literally no conversation uh, with the crew of Apollo 16 uh, during a good part of this uh, shift thus far. We now show Apollo uh, 16 at uh, 107,262 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity now reading uh, 4,947 feet per second. Apollo 16's uh, present weight, uh, 103,026 pounds. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, continuing to monitor at uh, 26 hours, uh, 13 minutes uh, since liftoff. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 26 hours, uh, 33 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. We presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 108,209 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 4,912 feet per second. We're standing by, uh, continuing to monitor in the event uh, uh, we have any conversation with the crew of Apollo 16. But it's uh, been a very quiet shift. We're at uh, 26 hours, uh, 33 minutes ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston 16. Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, Tony, you just went by my window. Half Earth, man, spectacular sight. I bet it is. I tell you, I'm green with envy. Well, I don't want to trade with you. <laughs> You say the world looked pretty good when it went by. How far out are we now, Tony? 108,285.1. I say again, you were broken up. Okay, uh, 108,285.1. Uh, changed to point six. Okay, thank you. Good. Have you had a chance to look long enough to see you uh, see the dynamics at all? Uh, negative. Uh, we just now took the shade down on my side. That's the first view I've had all morning. Very good. There was an awful big storm up uh, off the coast of Alaska uh, in the Bering Sea, I guess it was, yesterday. Uh, I can't see that now, though. I think y'all are in the... Mm -hmm. I guess our weather chart doesn't go up that high. I was going to see what we've got there now, but it only includes your recovery areas. We were reviewing that uh, film that you took, or the TV that you took last night, and there were a lot of sparklies out the window there. Were those all just loose particles floating around? Uh, yeah, the lamp was really shitty now on that uh, one panel there, Tony. And in fact, uh, we still got quite a few particles floating along with us right now. miles uh, from Earth <clears throat> and traveling at a speed of uh, 4,864 feet per second. Meanwhile, in the Mission Control Center, uh, we do presently plan uh, for Apollo 16 to perform mid-course uh, correction number two. Uh, the, this would be at the uh, normal uh, flight plan time, uh, 30 hours, uh, 39 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. And the MCC-2 burn uh, would have a delta V of 12.6 uh, feet per second. And this would be a burn of a two-second duration uh, performed with the serv service propulsion system engine. 
We're at uh, 27 hours, uh, one minute to ground elapsed time, continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 27 hours, eight minutes, uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, during this quiet period in the Mission Control Center, uh, we are uh, replaying the uh, launch television on one of the large screens. Uh, this was a team of flight controllers uh, that was on station during launch, and uh, quite frankly, very few had the opportunity to follow the sequence uh, during the uh, visually during the uh, the actual launch. We presently show Apollo 16 at uh, an altitude of 109,854 nautical miles and uh, velocity of uh, 4,850 feet per second. Houston 16. Go ahead, Charlie. Okay, uh, back up again. Uh, you want to talk to us about this uh, SPS burn room? Uh, stand oh. by one. Ken wants to stand by. Oh, okay. Okay, Tony, go ahead. Okay, this isn't the uh, burn rules. This is a discussion of uh, uh, procedures for mid-course two only. And the change uh, could be noted in your Q card, SPS Q card, or the GNC uh, checklist uh, G5-2, but you might want to hear the whole thing before you write it down. Okay, at uh, uh, burn minus six minutes, uh, the line that reads SPS helium valves 2 to auto should be changed to SPS helium valves 2 to manual for 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, SPS helium valves 2 to auto. And then they'd remain in auto for the burn. And we have a couple of notes to that. First, you know, you're talking about going to uh, on when you say manual, and uh, you don't want us to stay there 10 seconds if it exceeds uh, 210. That's right. If it exceeds uh, 210, uh, we want you to turn them off, and we'll do the burn with them off because if it went to auto uh, uh, during the burn, we'd go right back into the problem. Okay. Okay, that was one of the notes, and you just anticipated it there. The other note is you may, if uh, if we've diagnosed the uh, transducer problem correctly, uh, you'll probably get an SPS pressure light. That will go on at 201 pounds. Okay. Right now they're anticipating that by the time of the burn, uh, that transducer will be biased about 15 pounds high. Okay, that's the oxidizer side? Well, that's affirmative. Okay, uh, what is what do you think is wrong with that transducer? Right now, the note is that the uh, the comparison chamber, which should be at about uh, uh, atmospheric pressure, uh, is leaked, and the leak is just making up for the normal absorption of uh, helium. So the gauge is reading about constant. Eventually, that uh, uh, comparison chamber will leak down to zero, and then you'll be comparing uh, instead of comparing to 14.7, you'll be comparing to zero, and it'll read 15 pounds high. reading about 11 pounds high now. Okay, our gauge has been constant since the liftoff. Right, we can read the pressure further on down the line, and in the fuel side, uh, the tank pressure and the pressure down the line are tracking right along, and they should be in the oxidizer side, but on the oxidizer side, the tank's staying constant, and the one down the line is dropping down as it should. So either the one in the tank is just locked up, or uh, 
uh, the, the leak out of the comparison chamber is just making up the difference. Okay. Apollo Control Houston at 27 hours 34 minutes. Apollo 16 now 111,051 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 4,806 feet per second. Uh, Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Uh, just so there's no uh, misunderstanding here, I'd like to verify uh, this up uh, this uh, procedure. We're going to manual for 10 seconds, uh, six minutes before the burn, and then nominally we'll go back to auto, even if you get uh, uh, caution. The only point where we'd go to off would be if it went above 210. Okay, copy it. Six minutes, uh, helium valves go to manual uh, for 10 seconds, then to auto. If the pressure goes to greater than 210, go to all. That's if we get a caution light, uh, but less than 210, we still stay in auto. That's right. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 27 hours 37 minutes uh, into the mission. That uh, was Capcom Tony England uh, updating the crew of Apollo 16 uh, for the procedures for the uh, mid course correction number two burn, which is. Uh, MCC-2 uh, scheduled uh, for 30 hours of uh, 39 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. And that would be a 12.6 uh, uh, foot per second burn uh, with a duration of uh, two seconds uh, using the service propulsion system engine. We're at 27 hours uh, 38 minutes of uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 uh, now 111,245 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity uh, continuing to decrease, uh, now reading uh, 4,799 uh, feet per second. Uh, you guys feel like that uh, your transducers are uh, good on the... Uh, uh, what I mean to say is, uh, do you feel like your telemetry is good on the SPS uh, tank? Stand by one, Charlie. Uh, Charlie Houston. Go ahead. Okay, the telemetry here, uh, the telemetry is good, and we can read uh, from the transducer that you're reading your oxidizer tank pressure. We can also read from the inlet uh, pressure transducer, which you can't read on board. The inlet pressure transducer indicates the nominal decay in pressure due to helium absorption by the oxidizer. And this looks just like all the other flights. The other one is the one that you're reading, and it looks like it's locked up. The reason for the procedure that we've set up is to make sure that the, we know the pressures in the lines before this burn, which will give us a baseline to uh, plan the management during the uh, uh, LOI. Well, okay, that's what had us uh, talking in here about uh, how we're going to monitor the LOI. Right, that's our concern, too, and what we're trying to do is get enough unknowns out of this uh, mid-course so that uh, we can uh, have a good handle on the LOI. This is Apollo Control Houston at 28 hours of uh, four minutes uh, into the mission. We presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 112,448 nautical miles away from the Earth and uh, now traveling at a speed of 4,755 feet per second. We're standing by uh, continuing to uh, monitor any conversation uh, which uh, has been quite sparse through the past several hours of the flight. But we'll continue to do that and uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Houston Apollo 16, over. 
Go ahead, John. Uh, Roger, the last test is completed at the end of a minute, 40 seconds. We got 102.0 on a Delta B counter. Okay, 102.0. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 28 hours uh, 10 minutes. Uh, that was uh, Apollo 16 Commander John uh, Young reporting that the uh, EMS uh, bias check uh, was completed. And we presently show Apollo 16 at uh, 112,740 nautical miles away from the Earth uh, now traveling at uh, a speed of 4,744 feet per second. Thus far during uh, this shift of the uh, White team of flight controllers. Uh, it's been very straightforward by the books. Uh, very little conversation uh, between mission control and uh, the flight crew. We're standing by and continuing to monitor at uh, 28 hours 11 minutes. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo 16 Houston. Okay, we've got a few more questions on that paint shredding. Uh, when you have a break, uh, if you'll give us a call, we'll send them up to you. Okay, Tony, go ahead. Okay, uh, last night during the TV show, uh, the lighting wasn't uh, ideal. Maybe you have observed something that we couldn't see in the uh, tapes here. Okay, that uh, panel behind the docking target, uh, was it uh, completely covered with the shredded material? Uh, there's an access panel right in the middle of that, uh, of the overall panel there. And uh, we're curious to know whether it's just on the access panel or the whole panel. Okay, Tony, it's on the whole panel. Okay, how about any other panels around? It looked like on TV there might be some on that panel just to the right. And uh, so, uh, do you have any words on any other panels? Okay, it's on that whole uh, section there, Tony. There's two triangular panels, one on each side of this uh, rectangular pattern, which is right below the docking target. Uh, that whole section that is parallel to the plus X, below the docking target, the two triangular panels and the rectangular panel all are shredded. Okay, we copy that. Say again. Was there any uh, gold mylar kapton visible on the panel uh, behind the docking target? Negative. It's, uh, it's apparently just a black surface now. Most of the uh, white looking uh, paint or whatever it is is all, most all gone now. There's just a Oh, I'd say maybe 10% uh, of the surface is now covered with this uh, shredded uh, white stuff. All right, the origin of that question was there was some question whether the panel may not have come off entirely, and underneath that is some of that uh, mylar stuff. Well, the panel's still on. Uh, in fact, you, can, you can't even see the mylar. The, the, uh, below it uh, is a black surface uh, that looks uh, much like the top of the asset pro propellant tank. Okay, and I guess you mentioned last night there was some streaming of the uh, the paint that was coming off. Was there a preferred direction, and what was it? Yeah, radially, uh, well, uh, from us, uh, it was radial to the uh, x-axis. Almost right out over the outer module, out to y-axis. Was it independent of your uh, jet firings? Oh, when uh, Ken uh, fired the jets, uh, it really blew it off then. Uh-huh, in the same direction? No, I made it go the other way, down towards the uh, uh, legs of the lamp. Okay, um, without the RCS then, it was almost at right angles to the panel, and otherwise it was going down towards the legs. Yeah. And it looks like, like John said right now, Tony, as we come around in the sun, uh, there's some particles coming out off now, uh, more towards uh, quad uh, two. 
and it looks like it's uh, on the underside of this panel that we cannot uh, see. We cannot see it, and but it's uh, 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 between quad through it, two and the uh, apps propellant module. Uh, correction, the apps propellant tank. Okay, we're looking at the uh, drawing here and see where you mean. Say again. Uh, Roger, we copy that, Charlie. Uh, what we're searching for on this direction of uh, flow is if you think there's any uh, uh, anything in the area that might uh, cause it to stream out, like uh, some uh, a leaky tank or anything of that sort, or whether it just seems to be almost random. Uh, say again, uh, Tony, you cut out after all after uh, what we're searching for. Okay, uh, what we're searching for here is just, uh, we don't think there's any leak over there or anything of that sort, but if there is a preferred direction of flow, we're looking for any indication of what it might be so we know where, where the flow is coming from. Uh, Tony, please, uh, you were, for some reason, uh, you weren't uplinking, and uh, uh, we missed uh, all after uh, what, uh, what we were searching for. Okay, stand by a second, Charlie. I'll be back with you in a minute. Okay, Charlie Houston, how are you copy now? Bye-bye. Okay, uh, we were just uh, searching around here a little bit. Uh, far out prob possibility might be that uh, we had a small leak in there or something and it was causing the the peel paint to flow off in a particular direction, and we were just wondering if you had any indication that that might be the case, or whether it's just flying off at right angles. Well, when when we first saw it, uh, that was our uh, opinion also. But uh, now that uh, most of it's gone, is uh, uh, it's it's sort of just coming off in. Uh, uh, different directions over. Okay, we copy that. And Tony, the stuff that uh, is really not white, it's more of a, now it's more of a gold looking color, a uh, sandy color now. Okay. That's the threaded stuff you're talking about? That's affirmative. Right, uh, thermal people uh, aren't, aren't upset about this at all. I don't think it'll give us any constraint. Uh, that Evidently, that surface was only on there for the very high sun case. Okay. Well, the panel is intact underneath that paint job, whatever it was. Uh, the panel apparently is intact. Okay. Okay, Charlie, I guess that's uh, the whole set of questions here. Everybody's very happy with, uh, with uh, what we're hearing. Uh, Tony, that uh, panel that uh, shredded, the ones we were telling you about, are, uh, uh, have some uh, more pronounced uh, wrinkle ridges in them than uh, any of the other panels. Okay, we copy that, Charlie. Uh, we'll find out what that means. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 28 hours, uh, 36 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. We presently show Apollo uh, 16 at uh, 113,903 nautical miles away from the Earth and traveling at a speed of 4,703 feet per second. The uh, exchange that uh, you heard uh, between uh, Charlie Duke, uh, the lunar module pilot aboard Apollo 16, and Capcom uh, Tony England uh, uh, dealt, of course, with the uh, particles that were uh, sighted first uh, yesterday evening. Uh, the uh, Grumman uh, Thermo people who operate in one of the staff support rooms here have identified it as not being a problem, and here in Mission Control, uh, uh, we're attempting to acquire a more precise explanation uh, for the behavior of these paint particles. We're at uh, 28 hours, uh, 37 minutes uh, ground elapsed time, and this is Apollo Control, Houston.
This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 28 hours, uh, 52 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Our displays presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 114,597 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 4,678 feet per second. We're at uh, 28 hours, uh, 52 minutes, uh, and this is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 28 hours, uh, 57 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 now 114,858 nautical miles away from the Earth and now traveling at a speed of uh, 4,669 uh, feet per second. In the Mission Control Center, uh, we're in the process of a shift changeover. Uh, this uh, being the uh, orange team of uh, flight controllers uh, replacing the uh, white team of flight controllers and we're at uh, 28 hours uh, 58 minutes uh, into the mission this is Apollo Control Houston uh, Houston 16 you read? Go ahead 16 Okay did you read John there? Negative Uh, Roger. This is Apollo Control at 29 hours, 14 minutes. We've completed our shift handover in Mission Control. Uh, flight Director Pete Frank has been checking with his flight controllers. Uh, he'll be going around the room shortly and getting a uh, status and uh, uh, briefing for the things that will be going on during this shift. Uh, we will have a change of shift press briefing uh, that is scheduled to begin in about 10 to 15 minutes and will be in the news center briefing room. Participants in the briefing will be uh, flight director Gene Kranz and uh, flight surgeon uh, Dr. Royce Hawkins. That again will be in about 10 to 15 minutes in the MSC news center briefing room. Uh, 16, we got a state vector to target load whenever you're ready to accept. You got it. Roger, thank you. How long you been down there? Oh, about 20 minutes. Beautiful. A little warm. And Charlie, you're right over to Gulf Charlie of Mexico. Charlie looked out his window and said that uh, you guys are still there. Say again, kid. Looks like you guys are still there. What did you say about the Gulf, uh, Pete? Yeah, you should be right directly over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It, uh, we could see it anyway. And 16, you can have the computer. Thank you. You want us to go to Delta now, or are you guys going to hang on to the antennas? Rod, you can stay there.
This is Apollo Control. We're ready to switch now to the MSC News Center briefing room for our change of shift press briefing. This is Apollo Control at 29 hours, 52 minutes into the flight of Apollo 16. During our change of shift press briefing, the crew aboard the spacecraft has been completing preparations for their first mid-course correction on the uh, translunar leg of this flight. Uh, that mid-course coming at the uh, second opportunity at a ground elapsed time of 30 hours, 39 minutes. And they have now uh, completed aligning the uh, guidance platform, which is used as an attitude reference uh, for the maneuver. Uh, the burn will be performed with the service propulsion system engine in the uh, service module and will be a 12.6 foot per second maneuver, uh, burning the engine for two seconds. Uh, we've accumulated about four minutes of taped conversation with the crew, and we'll play that back for you now and then stand by live. Eastern, you have any angles? That's how many we got. Port at uh, 3930. Roger. 1016, we got the MCC 2 pad and the high gain antenna angle for MCC 2, whenever you're ready. Okay, Houston, go ahead with your pad. Okay, MCC 2, SPS, GNN, 66. Seven six eight plus one two four minus zero one one zero three zero three nine zero 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 one noun eighty ones plus zero 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 eight niner minus zero 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 one one plus Zero 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 eight niner zero nine four three five four zero one zero noun forty four is in a delta vt zero zero one two six zero zero two zero 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 eight three sextant star four zero two five six four Three zero three. Rest of the pad is NA. Set stars are Sirius and Rigel. Two one niner. One six six. Three one three. College none. Limb weight. Three six two five eight. Okay, we copy MCC2 SPS slash GNN 66767680 0 0 Zero 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 eight three four zero two five six four three zero three rest of the pad is in a Sirius and Rigel two one niner one six six three one three no knowledge Lem weight three six two five eight that's a pony Charlie are you ready for the high gain angle go ahead Okay, pitch minus four six, y'all plus zero. Okay, pitch minus four six, y'all plus zero. Roger. Okay, Houston, we turn on the hydrogen purge line heaters, maybe we get this uh, purge off uh, here early. Roger, coming.
Houston, uh, can we do this uh, wastewater dump uh, now, or do you want us to wait closer in? Stay by a minute, John. Wait a second. Uh, John, we prefer you wait till after the section start check. Okay. I'll tell you one thing about that that uh, section business, Don. Uh, we got so many particles off the limb out there, but I don't believe you could recognize the star pattern in the pattern in the telescope ever. But they show up just perfect in the section. Sure makes you appreciate one of these non-drifting platforms. Right. Uh, I can't envy that. You can do that water dump anytime you want. Well, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, do you have any objections to our going ahead and going to the attitude? Really crowded. I think like the time it's going to take to dump the water up against the burn time. Yeah, you can go ahead, you can go ahead to attitude or do the water dump, whichever you want. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and go to attitude and see what we got for time. Right. I'd like to, we'll get the star check off of the first priority. Roger. Sixteen. And uh, sixteen, you can delete charging battery A after the burn. It's charged efficiently. Okay. Sixteen, I've got some gyro drift updates and PIPA bias for you. When you're ready to come. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the uh, gyro drift, I'll give you addresses and uh, numbers. Address 14607-77552. Address 14617-77756. Address 1462 Seven seven three zero seven. Okay, that's one four six zero seven seven five five two. One four six one seven 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 five six. One four six two seven seven three zero seven. That's affirmative, and on the Pippa bus, the address is one four five six seven six seven four seven. I'm the Alpha 16. Okay, one four five six seven six seven four seven. That's affirmative. And did you copy Omni Alpha? He's okay, on the Alpha. All right. This is Apollo Control at 30 hours, 11 minutes. We're now about uh, 28 minutes away from the scheduled ignition uh, for the mid-course correction, the first uh, to be performed on this leg of the flight to the moon. Uh, that maneuver again will be uh, performed with the spacecraft service propulsion system engine. It will be a burn of about uh, two seconds duration, providing about uh, 12.6 uh, feet per second in uh, velocity change. React and narrow, Charlie. Okay, the star uh, check uh, checks out good. It's right in the middle, and the wastewater dump is in work. 
Say again, John. I didn't copy that. Star checks good. It's right in the middle, and the wastewater dump is in work. All right, Roger. Don, can you tell us if uh, if the Delta VC number you gave us includes any kind of a bias to compensate for the minute of uh, EMS on time prior to ignition? Stay by one. Yeah, I'm not asking for one. I'm just uh, asking if that's in there. Okay, stay by one second. Okay, we're terminating the uh, wastewater dump now. Roger. And the fan does take that into account. Okay, thank you, sir. This is Apollo Control at 30 hours 29 minutes. We're now about 10 minutes away from the scheduled ignition time for the uh, mid course correction maneuver to be performed with the spacecraft service propulsion system engine. A very short burn of uh, about two seconds duration. Uh, this maneuver will uh, change the point of closest approach to the moon from uh, its present value of about 117 nautical miles down to the desired altitude of 71 nautical miles, at which point uh, the lunar orbit insertion maneuver uh, would be performed, placing the spacecraft in the uh, nominal 58 by 170 nautical mile orbit about the moon. Again, that maneuver now scheduled to be performed 9 minutes 30 seconds from now. At the present time, Apollo 16 is 118,926 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,528 feet per second. Uh, flight Director Pete Frank has uh, checked the status with all of his flight controllers, and uh, we appear to be in uh, good shape for the maneuver. Uh, the crew has uh, completed virtually all of the activities prior to the mid-course correction, and everything looks good at this point. Okay, we pressurize the, the uh, pressure in the uh, SPS now. Roger. This is Apollo Control. We're now about three minutes away from the ignition of this mid-course correction. Everything continues to look good. Uh, the spacecraft is in the proper attitude. The uh, uh, SPS uh, tanks are pressurized. And we're now 2 minutes 35 seconds from ignition. Now 1 minute from ignition. Coming up on 10 seconds to ignition. And our guidance officer reports the burn is complete. That was scheduled to be a two-second uh, burn with a uh, change in velocity of 12.6 feet per second. Yeah, the old burn's complete, Houston. It's a big boot. Ready? And we're still waiting for the preliminary numbers on that burn. Our first reports from the guidance officer. Hey, Houston, you want a burn reported, y'all see everything. Stay by one. Uh, 16, we'd like a bird report. Okay, uh, Delta 6, 0. Burn time was on my watch, 2.1. Uh, we got uh, trim was at an attitude of 0, 094, 352, 008, plus 0.1, minus 0, plus 0.1, Delta VC minus 3.1. Fuel's reading uh, 0, 010. An ox, uh, zero, one, zero, no unbalanced. Roger, Kevin. And on board our uh, fuel... Okay, uh, Pete, and on board, the fuel per during the burn, the fuel pressure dropped uh, to 170, and the oxidizer dropped to 200. I understand 170 and 200. Okay, uh, Houston, our lamp CM Delta P is uh, 0.8. You want to go ahead and do the 
uh, tunnel vent to vent till greater than 2.7, right? Uh, Somebody. Houston, uh, what's your best guess on how long this baby will get to uh, two seven if it started off at nine tenths? Stand by, I want to get your number. Uh, they're saying an hour and fifty minutes. That's about what we. That's about what it looks like to be. All right, you understand. Uh, John, you using Charlie's wristwatch to get that number? No, I just remember how small that tunnel vent hole is. Right. This is Apollo Control at three, uh, 30 hours, 52 minutes. Uh, it'll probably be on the order of two to two and a half hours uh, from now before the flight dynamics officer has sufficient tracking data to confirm that the mid-course correction had the desired effect. Uh, that being to lower the point of closest approach uh, to the moon from the uh, value that we had prior to the maneuver of 117 nautical miles down to the desired altitude of 71, and also to place the spacecraft uh, arrival time at the desired flight plan time. Uh, the preliminary numbers, however, uh, did appear to be normal, and we'll be confirming that with tracking data. At the present time, the uh, crew is uh, beginning preparations for entering the lunar module. Uh, this is for the second time. And uh, at present, they are venting the tunnel, uh, the docking tunnel between the LAM and the command module, so that they have a differential pressure of about 2.7 pounds per square inch between the tunnel and uh, the command module, the command module cabin pressure somewhere around five to five and a half pounds per square inch. Uh, this venting is being done to remove as much of the atmosphere uh, from the limb as possible within uh, a reasonable amount of time. Uh, the first time that we went into the lunar module uh, last night, uh, the atmosphere in the command module uh, still contains uh, a small percentage of nitrogen of course, at launch, uh, we're launching with 60% oxygen, 40% nitrogen, and this is gradually uh, replaced with pure oxygen in the command module. Uh, by going into the lunar module uh, earlier than normal, uh, the amount of nitrogen that's uh, allowed into the lunar module is, uh, is greater than normal. Uh, therefore, in order to uh, have the oxygen content in the limb as close to pure oxygen as possible, uh, we are venting the lunar module down uh, the cabin will then be pumped up again prior to ingress uh, with pure oxygen. And using this procedure, we remove as much of the nitrogen as possible from the uh, lunar module cabin. The estimate on this uh, venting procedure was that it would require about an hour and a half. And we don't expect this to have any effect on the flight plan uh, schedule for the crews entering the lunar module. Uh, this should occur as it is planned in the flight plan. At the present time, Apollo 16 is 120,000 nautical miles from Earth, and the spacecraft velocity is down now to 4,486 feet per second. 16, would you verify H2 tanks 1 and 2 heaters off, and H2 tank 3 fan auto? Uh-oh, we got the... Uh Tanks one and two heaters in auto and, and uh, fan three in auto. We'll turn uh, H2 heaters one and two off. Uh, Roger, thank you.
This is Apollo Control at 31 hours, 34 minutes. Things have settled down into a rather quiet routine uh, here in Mission Control and we presume aboard the uh, spacecraft. At this time, the uh, Apollo 16 crew uh, should be eating what would be lunch for them. Uh, following that, they'll begin preparations for the transfer to the lunar module, the uh, second of this flight. Uh, of course, the first coming last night, an unscheduled entry. And uh, during this scheduled entry uh, this evening, Duke and uh, Young uh, will be powering up the communications and uh, uh, instrumentation systems aboard the lunar module. Uh, we'll check out the communications circuits with them and also uh, give the uh, control center here a chance to look at uh, all of the major systems on the lunar module once the uh, instrumentation to all these systems is powered up. Normally during the trans-lunar uh, leg of a flight, uh, the only instrumentation, the only uh, uh, readings that we have on the LEM uh, is the amount of power that is transferred from the command module to the lunar module. And uh, during this uh, entry into the LEM, Duke and Young will be uh, powering up the, uh, the bulk of the instrumentation that will allow us to look at all critical systems. They'll also be transferring most of the items from the uh, command module that they'll need for operations in the lunar module uh, later in the mission and uh, stowing these in the LEM. Copy, 2.1. And uh, while I'm talking to you on this uh, oxygen tank pressure gauge, uh, it's starting to look like there's a bias in there of about 14.7 uh, due to the fact that the reference chamber has apparently leaked its one atmosphere reference uh, value down to probably vacuum. And that coupled with a 5 PSI uh, meter bias should give you a total bias of about 20 PSI on oxygen tank pressure. But the gauge seems to be working okay except for that bias, so we're going to continue to follow it so we can give you a, maybe a, a better number prior to LOI. Roger. 
चलते Houston, when you get a minute, we've got a addition to the flight plan at 3248. Roger, go ahead with your 3248 edition. Okay, we want to add a note to read the limb CM Delta P. And we want to get that prior to that CM limb pressure equalization decal. And uh, Ken, that, we made an ink correction on the back of that uh, AOS LOS sun wheel uh, aid there. Uh, when you get around to digging that out, uh, give it to you or I can pick it up later. Okay, on the back of the sun wheel, the, the AOS LOS sun wheel, we entered an ink note uh, to account for the fact that we changed the reformat in the middle of his work there. We made an error on it. We've got to change the note now, and sometime when he's got that wheel out, I can read him up the correction. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 32 hours, 5 minutes. Uh, a few minutes ago, uh, Charlie Duke reported additional uh, paint apparently peeling from another of the uh, aluminum skins on the lunar module. And from uh, Duke's description, this uh, would appear to be one of uh, uh, the surfaces in the area of Quad 1 on the lunar module. Uh, this would be... Uh, the quad adjacent to the uh, commander's station in the crew compartment. And Duke said that there were about uh, three square feet of surface area involved. Uh, he described the uh, uh, appearance of the surface uh, about as the other uh, surface, which had also peeled, uh, ranging from what he said was a kind of a uh, sprouting grass appearance to shredded wheat. And at the present time, the crew is awaiting the uh, pressure differential between the uh, docking tunnel and the command module to reach 2.7 pounds per square inch. At uh, last report from John Young, the uh, difference in pressure as the tunnel is vented uh, had reached 2.1 pounds per square inch. The uh, crew is scheduled to begin uh, entering the lunar module uh, to power up the communication system and uh, turn on the instrumentation so that we can get a uh, complete look at most of the major systems on the lunar module here on the ground through telemetry. And the flight plan calls for them to enter the lunar module at about 33 hours, 5 minutes, or a little less than one hour from now. At the present time, Apollo 16 is uh, 123,126 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed of 4,382 feet per second.
This is Apollo Control at 32 hours, 26 minutes. Uh, here in the control center, the uh, lunar module uh, control officer has uh, replayed the tape of uh, Charlie Duke's description of the additional surface of the lem that appeared to be uh, peeling, where the paint uh, was peeling, uh, similar to the, uh, the way panels uh, below the uh, docking target were reported peeling yesterday. Uh, from Duke's description, we were not able to pinpoint the precise panels uh, involved, although it is obviously very close to the area that uh, was reported peeling previously, and appeared much uh, the same from Duke's description. Uh, the paint, which is uh, painted on the uh, very thin aluminum skin in this area of the lem to provide uh, a small margin of additional uh, thermal protection in worst-case conditions where the uh, lunar module uh, is exposed to uh, greater sun angles than, than we will be seeing on this mission. Uh, the, the paint on those surfaces uh, is, uh, as Duke described them, giving the appearance of sprouting grass and then uh, peeling back even further uh, and giving an appearance of shredded wheat. Uh, Duke said that the area involved was about uh, one feet by or one foot by three feet and was uh, in the area of quad one, uh, which is one of the reaction control system thruster quads uh, located uh, adjacent to the commander's station in the uh, lunar module ascent stage. Uh, General Jim McDivitt, who is in the control center at the present time, advised Pete Frank that uh, the studies that uh, Grumman has done, the manufacturer of the lunar module, show that uh, even if all of the surfaces on the LEM, which are painted in this manner, uh, were to lose their paint, that uh, the effect would be minimal and would cause no concern as far as the, uh, the temperatures of the uh, lunar module are concerned. Uh, we expect that we will get uh, further information uh, at the time the crew enters the lunar module and uh, also we will be looking at uh, all of the uh, pertinent systems, all of the critical systems aboard the lunar module and uh, getting a uh, comparative set of numbers to go with those that we saw last night. And uh, all of the engineers uh, here in the control center in the back rooms, the staff support rooms, uh, and in building 45 at the Manned Spacecraft Center uh, will be looking at this data very closely and comparing it with the information that we got uh, when the LAM was powered up last night. Okay, uh, Houston, we got 2.7 on a tunnel vent right now. Roger, copy, 2.7. Roger, Lim, CM, Delta P. Roger, Lim, CM, Delta P. Lim, CM, Delta P. Delta P. Okay, we copy. Copy, go ahead. Okay, uh, Houston, we're going to come on with a track two and uh, pull up the cabin. Roger. How's that look, Houston? Is that about five, seven to you? We're showing about five, five, John. Okay. John, they say that's good enough, Howard. Okay, Directo 2 is going uh, closed. Roger. 
and an LMCM Delta P is uh, 3.3. 3.3. Delta P is 3.3. Yes, sir. Roger, stand by a minute. 16, we want to continue limb venting until you have a reading, a delta P reading of 3.4 on the meter, and that should take less than 10 minutes. Okay, we copy. We'll go to 3.4. Okay, we're in limb vent. Roger. Okay, Houston, it's an honest. Three four. Roger, Cavi. Are we clear to proceed? Over. Roger, clear. Okie dokie. This is Apollo Control at 32 hours 58 minutes. The LEM cabin has now been vented down to the uh, desire desired pressure level and the crew will shortly begin repressurizing the, uh, the cabin to about uh, five to five and a half pounds per square inch. Uh, following that they will be uh, preparing to enter the lunar module. Uh, we expect that will require about uh, five to ten minutes. Uh, the flight plan calls for them to be in the LEM by about 33 hours and five minutes, or about uh, seven or eight minutes from now. Uh, they will have to uh, remove the tunnel hatch, and the probe and drogue assembly, and then crawl through the tunnel into the lunar, lunar module. Uh, following that, they have about... Uh, 30 minutes or so of housekeeping activities aboard the LEM, then they'll activate the communication system and run a series of communications checks with mission control. Our LEM systems engineer has just reported that uh, they are beginning the activities to, toward repressurizing the lunar module. During this entry into the LEM, they'll also be uh, powering up the uh, uh, data systems that will allow us to get a good look at all of the uh, major systems on the lunar module uh, through the telemetry. And we'll have teams of engineers here in mission control and in the engineering support uh, uh, rooms in building 45 here at the Manned Spacecraft Center, uh, looking at this data very closely and comparing it uh, with the similar uh, measurements that we got yesterday uh, when the crew uh, made their unscheduled, uh, previously unscheduled entry into the LEM. At the present time, Apollo 16 is 125,324 nautical miles from Earth, and we're continuing to watch the spacecraft velocity drop off. It's down now to 4,310 4, feet per second. Ready to uh, remove the hatch. Roger. That was Charlie Duke reporting that the crew is about ready to uh, remove the hatch, allowing them to uh, get into the LEM tunnel, remove the probe and drogue assembly, which will clear the tunnel and allow them to uh, enter the lunar module. Uh, Charlie's floating on over to the lunar module now. Okay. Check out all the right. Okay. That was John Young reporting Charlie Duke, as he put it, floating over to the lunar module now. Uh, that report came at 33 hours, 14 minutes. And we expect that uh, Young will be following shortly. In the docking in tunnel index, minus 3.5. Minus 3.5. This is Apollo Control. Uh, we're awaiting the first bits of data from the lunar module. 
as Young and Duke begin partially powering the vehicle up. The flight dynamics officer just reported that as a result of the mid-course correction performed at uh, 30 hours, 39 minutes, the spacecraft appears to be on the uh, desired trajectory and uh, will be uh, approaching the moon at an altitude of about 71 nautical miles at its closest point prior to the uh, lunar orbit insertion maneuver. This is the pre-planned value. Uh, we also have an update on the uh, predicted impact point for the Saturn third stage, the S-4B. Uh, the new coordinates that we now have for that impact point are 1 degree 50 minutes north and 23 degrees 18 minutes west. Uh, this is slightly closer to the planned target point of 30 degrees west than uh, the coordinates we got last night. As I recall, those uh, had us about 22 and a half uh, west. We're now showing about 23 degrees 18 minutes west. So moving a little bit more westerly as we continue to get additional tracking uh, on the S-4B. And the uh, expected impact time is 75 hours, 7 minutes, 3 seconds ground elapsed time. Casper. Hey, Roger, Doug, did you guys get the, uh, the total index? You even got it, kid. Okay. Yeah, Don, I'm holding off on the uh, oxygen heaters. I'm keeping them uh, all three in auto until we get the uh, surge and repress tanks. Uh, Built back up. That's okay. If you'd like for me to turn them off, I can reconfigure now. Otherwise, I'd like you to help me remember not to leave them on. Roger. Roger. We can carry kid. We remind you. Okay. Thank you. This is Apollo Control at 33 hours, 47 minutes. Uh, we've heard nothing from John Young and Charlie Duke since Young reported about uh, 30 minutes ago that they were entering the lunar module Orion. Uh, the crew is scheduled to be uh, stowing items that they've carried over from the command module, and then we'll begin powering up the lunar module according to a uh, checklist that they'll be carrying on with them. And shortly after they begin the uh, partial power-up, we should see uh, telemetry data of most of the uh, critical systems aboard the lunar module. Hey, Don, uh, can I talk to you about the uh, docking latch? Right here. You all set, or you want me to wait a minute? No, go ahead. Okay, uh, you remember we told you at the time we uh, that we docked that uh, we had a, a number 10 that didn't look like it had stroke quite the same as the others, but the lock was over the over the rail. I, right. You weren't on board at the time, that's right. Uh, we were talking to Gordy, but that right. was one of the things we reported. And uh, the uh, plate that goes over the bungee fairing is cocked slightly. And now that we've got everything cleaned out of the tunnel, I can look in here. It's, uh, it's real obvious that uh, the bungee hasn't fired completely. It's down. The top of the bungee is recessed about uh, a half of an inch down. It looks like uh, it just hadn't triggered. And as a matter of fact, I'm looking at the latch, and by golly, I can see between the, the latch and the tunnel ring. So it didn't even pull down against that. And uh, I really, you know, obviously, I don't have any concern for it, except uh, I'm, I've never seen one that looked just like this. And I was going to go ahead and uh, recock it and fire it again and see how that worked with the manual trigger. But I got to thinking maybe that's, uh, maybe it's best to let you folks think about it. 
main thing I want to do is make sure it's not a problem uh, in unlatching it when the time comes. I understand, man. Uh, Casper, uh, we got, we got all the data we need, and we're going to take a look at it. Uh, we do not want you to recock and fire the thing manually, and we'll get back to you later. Okay. And Houston, uh, Casper turned over the power supply to Orion at uh, 33.58. Roger, Casper. With Ken Mattingly's report that he turned over uh, power to the LEM, uh, which came at 33 hours, 58 minutes, uh, we would expect shortly to begin seeing uh, telemetry data from the lunar module. Also, Mattingly commented on uh, a problem that had been reported uh, previously, and that is that uh, one of the 12 uh, docking latches on the command module uh, apparently had not uh, latched firmly around the docking ring of the lunar module as uh, would normally be expected. Uh, this doesn't constitute any concern. Uh, three of these 12 docking latches are adequate to assure uh, a hard dock, and uh, only one of the 12 is, uh, is not latched down firmly. The belief uh, at the present time is that it's uh, probably just hung up if the thing were fired again that it would uh, uh, engage fully. And it uh, doesn't appear that anything further will be done with this uh, particular latch. Uh, the expectation is that uh, when the two vehicles are separated and then docked again, that uh, the latch will perform properly. And as, uh, as we mentioned, uh, in any event, uh, only three of the 12 latches are required for a hard docking. Uh, we have now started getting LEM data, so we'll be uh, taking a good look at uh, all of the systems on the lunar module. Super on VHF Alpha, I mean. Man, that's good stuff, isn't it? Just You're beautiful. Just clear as you can be. Okay. Go. 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 Hey, kid! Orion, Casper on Bravo Simplex. Okay, I'm reading you five by the uh, Casper I me. Loud and clear. You're super. Houston, how do you read? Orion, over. You're loud and clear, all right. Okay, we're coming down, down voice back up and uh, on a hot mic, and uh, you're loud and clear to us, over. Ready. Okay, how does the low Brit rate look to you, P? Looks good, all right. Okay, I'm going to bit rate to high. Okay, how do you read now, P? Loud and clear. Okay, you're five also. You got high bit rate. Looks good, Charlie. Okay, we're going bow man right. Okay, how do you read now, P? Loud and clear. Okay. Hey, you're on a, uh, we can, we're down to step uh, five on page one dash, one eighteen, one dash eighteen. Uh, you want to look at the high bit rate some more? Negative, we don't want to look at it anymore. You do not, right? We're going to low bit rate.
Okay, the book says perform uh, voice and low bit rate check with this man. How do you read? Loud and clear. Same home. Uh, how do you read uh, with the function and voice over? Your line through. Okay, your bye bye and a uh, low bit rate. How does it look? Low bit rate looks good. Okay, we're going to uh, high bit rate. And we'll do the same thing with you, uh, voice check and uh, high bit rate check. Houston, how do you read uh, now, over? Your line clear. Okay, uh, give me a short count, please, Steve. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, you're very good. Okay, we're going to, uh, bit rate is going low, and we're going uh, s band range to ranging. Roger. Okay, how do you read now, over? Loud and clear. Okay, how does the ranging check going? Stand by. Ranging looks good, all right. Okay, Houston, our uh, ED bats are both go at 37 volts, and the sequence camera works. Roger, copy. And uh, John's uh, OPS was 5,800 and mine was 6,000. Over. Roger. Okay, as far as we're concerned, uh, the comm is uh, just uh, super, and we're ready to go on to page 120 and deactivate, if you guys are. Stand by one around. Okay, around, you can deactivate. Okay, deactivating. Our LEM controllers uh, here in the control center report that uh, all of the LEM systems uh, look good based on the telemetry data that we're receiving. Apollo 16 at this time is 128,138 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,221 feet per second. And Charlie Duke uh, reported that uh, he and Young are now ready to begin deactivating the lunar module in preparation for going back into the uh, command module and closing up the hatch. Okay, Houston, uh, Casper has the lift power back at uh, 3419. Roger, at 3419. Hey, firm. Hey, Don, uh, if anyone wonders what I'm doing with 52, I just wanted to use auto optics to point at Jupiter. Roger. I'm not going to take any marks. Roger, I understand.
This is Apollo Control at 34 hours, 35 minutes. John Young and uh, Charlie Duke are apparently still in the lunar module, uh, Orion. They're not scheduled to complete the closeout and return to the command module for another 25 or 30 minutes. Uh, during the time that they had the uh, LAM partially powered up and we had uh, telemetry data, all of the systems on board looked normal. Everything looked very good. Uh, Casper, we've got the LOM on us five flyby pad whenever you're ready to copy. Step by one. Roger. Uh, we got Casper's keeper over in the lunar module taking a peek, and uh, we'll be closing out and we'll get in a minute. Roger, Stan. Did you uh, really get to be a real believer in the heating uh, capacity of the sun? Uh, in a lunar module here, the uh, commander's windows in direct sunlight, and it's almost too hot to touch, and my window's in the shade, and it's got fro it's frosted over. Ready. Okay, we go closer out, Pete. Okay, Charlie. Yes, that was Charlie Duke reporting. Uh, he and John Young are going to close out the lunar module now and get back in the command module. Uh, Duke also uh, gave one observation of the effects of the sun on heating the uh, vehicle. He reported that the commander's window, which was in direct sunlight, uh, was almost too hot to touch, and the uh, uh, lunar module pilot's window on the other side of the vehicle was frosted over. Uh, that window, of course, not in the sunlight. And at this time, Apollo 16 is 129,776 nautical miles from Earth. Uh, the speed down now to 4,170 feet per second. Houston, the, uh, the hatch is closed, the probe is installed, the probe is installed, the hatch is installed on our side, the limp tunnel limp valve is in limp CM Delta P, the tunnel lights are off. Is it Okay, if we go to uh, PDC, uh, set up PDC now, or you all want to wait till uh, 34? Stand by one. Uh, 16, you can go ahead and do the PDC. Okay. That was John Young reporting the uh, probe and drogue assembly reinstalled in the LEM tunnel, the hatch uh, back in place. And uh, a bit of uh, what sounded like bluegrass banjo music drifting in uh, from the background. Uh, apparently the uh, music being played on the crew's onboard uh, tape recorder. Uh, that report that... Uh, Young and Duke had uh, completed their activities aboard the uh, lunar module and were back in the command module with everything in the LEM buttoned up. Uh, came at about 35 hours, 5 minutes. Uh, we got the report at uh, 33 hours, 14 minutes that uh, Charlie Duke had uh, entered the lunar module. So the, uh, to the yellow eye flyby pad, uh, we cryo tank configure changes for you. The uh, total time that Young and Duke were in the uh, lunar module Orion was about uh, 1 hour 45 to 1 hour 50 minutes. Now, we don't have a precise time on their uh, re-entry to the command module, but uh, that would be a fairly good estimate. Hey, Houston, 
16, you can go ahead with the crowd tank reconfiguration. Okay, uh, on the crowd tanks, we want H2 tanks 1 and 2 heaters auto, and tank 3 fan off. Oxygen tanks 1 and 2 heaters off, tank 3 heater auto. Okay, Raj, uh, configuration now, H2 heaters 1 and 2 auto, uh, O2 heaters uh, 1 and 2 off, uh, 3 were auto, that's as we had it, uh, H2 fans 1 and 2 off, and uh, 3 off. Okay, Houston, you can go ahead with the LOI plus 5 uh, fans. Okay, LOI minus 5, flyby, SPS, GNN. Six 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 zero three plus one two four minus zero one two zero six niner two eight two six two seven plus zero zero three niner eight minus zero one one eight niner plus zero four two two niner two one zero one niner three three four six NA H sub P is plus zero zero two zero four zero four four one 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 zero seven zero four three six five sextant star one four one two four eight one seven four the next three lines are not applicable latitude minus two three zero three minus one six five zero zero one one zero zero niner three six two zero seven one four two two three four two set stars Sirius and Rigel two one niner one six six three one three Ullage none other number one burn SPS docked two Pad based on PTC refs mat. Three limb weight three six two eight seven. Uh, Raj, uh, peak uh, LOI minus five flyby. SPS slash GNN six 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 zero three plus one two four minus zero one two. Charlie. I said we took all that film over there. Maybe that's the 30 pounds. That's 
pretty much where it came from. And 16, we still have this uh, note uh, to go on the uh, sun wheel. Stand by. I'm in Charlie 16. Sixteen, your rates are okay anytime you want to go into PTC. Sixteen, Omni Bravo, and then we'll take care of the antenna. This is Apollo Control, uh, 36 hours now into the flight of Apollo 16, and uh, the spacecraft is now in its passive thermal control mode, uh, rotating at uh, the rate of three revolutions per hour. The uh, crew is uh, scheduled to be uh, eating dinner, and following that they have a uh, scheduled eight-hour rest period. Apollo 16 at the present time is 135,200, or rather 132,595 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed of 4,084 feet per second. Control 37 hours now into the flight of Apollo 16, a flight that has settled down into a steady and at the moment uh, rather quiet routine. Uh, this is typically a quiet time of uh, lunar missions with the crew uh, using the, the time that they have available to uh, review checklists and procedures that they'll be following uh, during the very busy uh, days ahead on the lunar surface and in orbit around the moon. Also at the present time, the uh, uh, crew is scheduled to be in the midst, midst of a, uh, an eat period, uh, having dinner uh, prior to uh, retiring for an eight-hour rest period. Uh, we've been watching all of the spacecraft systems here in mission control. Everything uh, looks good, as it has uh, during most of this flight. And we show Apollo 16, now 134,939 nautical miles from Earth.
traveling at a speed of 4,013 feet per second. Okay, uh, Go ahead, Pete. Okay, just uh, last few words here. We don't have anything for you except uh, one note to Ken. Earlier you asked about uh, whether or not the pad we read you contained the uh, correct bias for the EMS. We told you it did, and we've looked at it a little more now. And actually, uh, it turns out it did not. The bias on that one was... Uh, less than a foot per second, I guess. In the future, we will include that bias in the pads. Okay, thank you now. Raj, and uh, we're ready to copy any time you can give us the onboard readouts and get it into the uh, flight plan here at about 37. Roger. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, Bat C is 37. Power bat A is 37. Power bat B, 37. RCSA is re uh, 87. RCSB, 92. RCSC, 93. RCSD, 96. Is that what you wanted, the uh, quantity of the RCS? That's right. And uh, we copied 37, 37, 37, 87, 92, 93, and 96. That's, that's correct. And uh, May bus, Buffet is reading uh, 29 plus volts. Ken, for your information, the uh, BTC looks beautiful. Uh, in fact, it was so good, it took some of us quite a while to realize you were in a BTC. Yeah, my attitude hole looks a lot like that, too. Right. Call and the technique for the way you hit proceed. Roger, I understand. <laughs> Houston, uh, let me read you this uh, cryo tank configuration and you tell me if that's what you want for the sleep period. Okay. Go ahead, 16. We're ready. Over. Go ahead, 16. We're ready to copy the cryo configuration. Okay, uh, H2 heaters are 1 and 2 are in auto, O2 heaters 1 and 2 are off, 3 is in auto, H2 fans 1 and 2 are off, and 3 is in auto. Uh, 16, the H2 tank 3 fan should be off. Okay, H2 tank 3 off. And I used to fear informational MCM Delta B. Gauge has not moved since we uh, equalized the two uh, vehicles. Uh, Roger, understand 60. And uh, 16, would you verify optics power off? No, sir, we aren't ready to turn it off yet. Okay. Houston, 16, over. Hello, 16, Houston. You ready for a verb 74? Roger, we're standing by. Go ahead. What are you doing with a graveyard shift, tank? Eh? Oh, that's lots of fun. Get to watch y'all snooze. Okay, uh, Direct O2 is on. The captain's uh, coming up now. Roger, copy. E mod complete, uh, 16. Thank you. Okay, Houston, Direct O2 is on. Roger. 
Roger, copy. This is Apollo Control at 38 hours into the flight of Apollo 16. Uh, we expect the crew will be beginning their scheduled eight-hour rest period shortly. Uh, here in Mission Control, we're in the process of a shift handover. Flight Director Gene Kranz and his white team of flight controllers uh, coming on now to replace the orange team headed by uh, Flight Director Pete Frank. The capsule communicator on this shift will be uh, astronaut uh, Hank Hartsfield replacing astronaut Don Peterson in that position. And at the present time, Apollo 16 is 137,239 nautical miles from Earth, uh, traveling at a speed of 3,945 feet per second. This is Apollo Control. I would like to correct one portion of our last announcement on the uh, shift uh, handover, the uh, flight director. On this shift will be uh, Phil Schaffer rather than Gene Kranz. At uh, 38 hours, four minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Houston, Casper. Hello, Casper, go ahead. Casper, Houston, go ahead. Casper, Houston, go ahead. Casper, Houston, if you're transmitting, you're way down in the mud. I can't read you. Can you read now, Hank? Okay, much better now, Ken. Okay, uh, I say I've got a film status report for you, and I'd like to ask you a question about the optics. I'd like to stow the optics instead of leaving them up uh, unless the uh, temperatures are going to get too high. And the reason for this is that every time we run around past the sun, it's like throwing a spotlight inside. Roger, stand by. Okay, Ken, go ahead with your film status, and uh, we're looking at that store in the optics. Okay, copy, 26 frames on Oscar. Oscar, uh, November, November report we got last night was 33 frames. You didn't use any of it today? No, uh, just for that UV. So whatever it was last night, it must be one more. Okay, 34. And Ken, it's okay to stow the optics. Okay, Ken, get the voice down. Have a good night. Okay, Henry. See you in the morning. 
Casper, go ahead. Okay, I'm not sure what just happened. Um, I just saw, I was down looking at the optics, and all of a sudden I saw a warning light, and I got a no attitude and a gimbal lock light. And my, uh, my ball seems to, in fact, have, uh, looks like the platform may be frozen. Although we're still, uh, still in BTC here. Okay, we're seeing some telemetry. We saw something about the time you come on the line there. And uh, it shows uh, CDUs down there in down 20. That's me and the uh, gimbal lock. Uh, stand by a little bit, Ken. Uh, we're taking a look at the telemetry. This is Apollo Control at 38 hours, 22 minutes. Uh, that was Ken Mattingly uh, reporting what appears to be a problem in the uh, guidance and navigation uh, system on the command module. Uh, his voice report uh, came almost simultaneous with uh, a warning light on the guidance officer's console and a report from the guidance officer to the flight director, uh, Phil Schaffer, uh, here in the control center. Uh, Mattingly's uh, description of the problem was that uh, they had a warning uh, light in the command module uh, indicating uh, no attitude, uh, the gimbal platform frozen. Uh, we have an indication here of gimbal lock and uh, course align, and we're looking at that data right now to try to determine uh, what it might mean. Uh, Ken, just uh, so we can make sure we got it straight down here, could you run through again what you were doing and then the sequence of events? Okay, Hank, I'm not real sure when this happened. I was, uh, I was trying to see if I could pick up uh, one of the planets in the optics, and I was using uh, P-52. And I had uh, going in and I was calling uh, option three and then putting in planet vectors out of the flight plan. And I tried, I thought I was going to catch, uh, I guess it was, it looked like I had just missed it. And uh, I was driving around, just uh, kind of looking around to see what I could see in the sky and waiting to try and pick up Jupiter. And uh, somewhere in there, I guess I came down to zero the optics or do something, and I looked down and saw I had a ping light. And... Uh, I guess I had just recently, I guess I was about ready to give up on it and uh, call Poo. And I think I had, in fact, I think I called Poo at or just before the time I, we ended up with the, uh, the gimbal lock and the no attitude. And that was just a couple of seconds or so, I guess, before I called you about it, uh, maybe 15 seconds or so. Okay, you got a gimbal lock. I can't think of any combination of disk inputs. I was trying to think if I could have made some combination of disk inputs. It might have, uh, had I gotten in uh, almost the right input, that I could have caused a problem. But I don't, I don't see where I was using any verbs or nouns that could have done this. Okay, you you got a gimbal lock. No at. Uh, did you get an ISS warning? No, sir, I did not. Oh, and the, uh, the now 20s uh, were approximately correct for both uh, pitch and roll, although the, uh, the uh, middle gimbal angle was uh, completely out to lunch. Here's the Casper. Go ahead, Ken. I'd like for you to think about uh, the effects of having me go ahead and do a 
Denver 41 now 20 to match up with the SCS. That thing's been drifting a good bit, but uh, in this case, uh, maybe I can get it close enough to have a starting point to try and pick up some things. Uh, I've been looking in the have been looking in the telescope just before this all happened, and there's so much of this, so many of these little particles out there that uh, chances of recognizing a star pattern are extremely dubious. I'd like to try and maybe we can work on uh, something like the Earth, maybe the Sun or something like that. Go do Okay, stand by. Okay. Do you want to stand by on the bird 41 down 20 till you get your gimbal lock removed? Okay. Capcom, tell him we're working up. Thank you. Casper Houston, we'd like you to hold up on the bird 41 down 20. We're working on a procedure to try to get rid of the gimbal lock. Uh, Roger, we had good high bit rate data, and uh, they're pouring over that now. Okay, I'll sit tight then, thank you. Casper Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we want to try to get the platform inertial again, and what we'd like for you to do is a uh, verb 23, noun 20, enter, enter, verb 40, enter. Enter. Okay, verb 40. Enter. Okay, our data shows the platform's inertial now, Ken. Rod, and it appears that way from here, too. Okay, Ken, you can go ahead now with your verb 41 now and 20. That's affirmative. Hey, uh, Ken, hold up on that verb 41 just a second. Welcome. I'll go ahead and load it, but won't enter. Okay, there. Uh, uh, guidance has uh, got a little thing there looking at and talking to people in the back room. A uh, little discussion going on here. Okay, I won't do a thing then. Thank Apollo Control Houston at uh, 38 hours, uh, 40 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, what you've been listening to is uh, Command Module Pilot uh, Ken Mattingly uh, talking back and forth uh, with Mission Control. Uh, we had an earlier indication uh, that the uh, IMU platform uh, appeared to be in uh, a gimbal lock. Uh, the Mission Control. Houston, are, are the ZDC ball and the IMU ball completely out of sync? Well, actually, they're uh, not that far out. They're like uh, 10 degrees in the uh, outer gimbal, and uh, let's see, the, the middle gimbal is off by about 2 degrees, the inner gimbal no more than 3. Much well, closer to 2 degrees. That's relatively happened. close. Mission Control has been going through a uh, series of procedures with uh, Ken Mattingly uh, uh, to alleviate the uh, uh, gimbal lock, uh, lock uh, situation. Presently, the platform is inertial. Uh, we'll stand by as a series of verbs and nouns have been passed up uh, to the spacecraft Casper. We're at uh, 38 hours, uh, 42 minutes of uh, ground elapsed time. Apollo 16 now 138,785 
86 nautical miles away from Earth. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Casper, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, I think we've got some agreed on procedure here is to go ahead with the Vert 41 now 20. That's procedure uh, in the GNC checklist 7 1. And reset the rest mag, rest mat flag, and press on through that. Okay, uh, I guess uh, based on our drifts, I'm not sure that's any better, but I guess it's no worse, so I'll just go through that one then. Okay, 7 1. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 38 hours uh, 54 minutes of uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, Command module pilot uh, Ken Mattingly uh, now going through a series of verbs and nouns uh, uh, trying to align the uh, IMU platform to the uh, gyro display uh, uh, coupler. We presently show uh, Apollo 16 at a distance of 139,243 nautical miles away from the Earth. Continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Hey, it it's not clear I'm going to be able to find any stars with no closer alignment than I have on this thing. Looks like I'm going to have to get a, a closer alignment by using some big objects like uh, Earth or something like that. Okay, are those uh, particles out there giving me a lot of trouble? That's all there is. They're just everywhere. Casper Houston, uh, why don't you go ahead and try then with uh, the sun and the moon? you got a filter for the sun, right? That's permanent. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 38 hours, uh, 59 minutes of ground elapsed time. Uh, that was Ken Mattingly reporting uh, difficulty uh, sighting uh, stars through the optics, uh, those desired uh, stars for alignment uh, because of uh, the... Uh, vast number of particles. Uh, the update uh, from Capcom, Hank Hartsfield indicated uh, a go-ahead to try the alignment uh, using uh, larger objects, uh, in this case the, the sun and the moon for alignment. Uh, we show uh, Casper's uh, onboard computer program in uh, program 52. This is a platform alignment program as uh, command module uh, Pilot uh, Ken Mattingly presses on uh, with his procedures. Apollo 16 is now 139,452 nautical miles away from the Earth. And uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston, uh, 39 hours, uh, 3 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, guidance reports that uh, Command Module Pilot uh, Ken Mattingly is uh, uh, halfway through his platform alignment. Uh, he has uh, performed his mark on the sun. He is now proceeding uh, with his mark on the moon. Uh, we're at uh, 39 uh, hours, 4 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston. Go ahead. Okay, I used the uh, Earth and the Sun, and I got uh, four ball seven, which I think is uh, going to be a significant improvement. I'd like to go ahead and uh, see what those torquing angles turn out to be. Roger, we concur. Okay, that looks about right for the amount that I had to correct for it. And I was, it's kind of hard to mark on the Earth because you have to guess where, uh, where the, the uh, Terminator really ought to be. Can you have those angles? Roger, can't go ahead and talk. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 39 hours, uh, 9 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we now show Apollo 16 at 139,788 nautical miles away uh, from Earth. 
command module uh, skin mattingly and using the uh, earth and sun uh, uh, for platform alignment uh, through the optics uh, reports uh, significant improvement over his earlier attempt uh, in the star sightings. We'll continue to monitor uh, conversations uh, between uh, command module pilot uh, Ken Mattingly and Capcom uh, Hank Hartsfield uh, here in Mission Control. Okay, Henry, if you have those angles, I'll torque these. Uh, Ken, what was in 905? Four balls, one. Roger. Okay, I'll torque these at, uh, on the minute, one, one. Okay, clear to torque. It's Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 39 hours, 11 minutes. Uh, Mattingly doing a second 50, uh, P-52 uh, platform alignment. Uh, this time uh, using two stars for sighting. And in this way, uh, fine-tuning uh, his earlier improvement, uh, if possible, with the uh, sun and uh, uh, earth and sun as reference. We're at uh, 39 hours, uh, 12 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. And we now show Apollo 16 at an altitude of uh, 139,907 nautical miles away from the Earth. Okay, it looks like we're uh, pretty much on target now, and I don't see any reason to torque these again. Unless you particularly want to. Okay, uh, we concur, Ken. Don't torque those. And uh, we want to check a few switches. Uh, they're working on now getting a switch checklist, and then we're going to let you get some rest and smoke the data over during the night and have a story for you in the morning. Okay, can you give me any, um, can you give me any cursory uh, ideas of that just to see if there's any possibility I entered something uh, inadvertently? Or did it take too long to sort all that out? Okay, the preliminary look here, we think it's a hardware problem, Ken. Some sort of a transit problem, okay. and uh, when you get the data in here, we'll be able to tell them more about it. Okay. Guess I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, they they don't think at this point it's anything that you did, and it, it appears to be a transit problem, but we won't know till we take a look at it. Okay. Let me give you one other little tidbit that... Uh now seems to be somewhat more of interest than it was before, and that's it. When I take this uh, optic zero to zero, the uh, area around the shaft T-pack makes a lot of a lot more noise than the ones that try to use it. It seems to me that it's making more noise now than it used to. Uh, when I say used to, when we first started out, first started out they were very very quiet. You couldn't even hear them running. And now they're getting noisier, and that may be typical. But uh, it's just one more thing that uh, I guess we, you know, throughout all these things, I'll try to minimize the number of times I zero the optics, at least with the zero switch. I'll use manual wherever possible. Okay, that only occurs when you're zeroing? That's permanent. Well, actually, Hank, I, I just tried it in manual, and it occurs when the noise occurs and whenever I'm in an extremely high rate, you know, like using high on a max shaft rate. Roger, copy. Okay, Ken, we'd like to check some switches up on panel one. Stay by, sir. Go ahead, eh? Okay, we'd like to check position at FDAI scale. The scale is in 5-1. Okay, uh, select. Select is in one half. The source is in attitude set, and the attitude set is in GDC. Okay, that's what we want to know. Thank you. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and uh, get some sleep then. You guys know what you want to look at? 
for the stand by one sec. Okay, Ken, we don't have anything else. Casper Houston? Go ahead. Okay, you caught us on the antenna switch. Uh, we don't have anything else for you. Uh, we'll look at the data over and try to get some word up to you tomorrow. It looks like to us now though that you can get a full eight hours sleep. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. Okay, Hank. How about, uh, how about making the dollar shift? Right. <laughs> This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 39 hours, uh, 30 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 140,597 nautical miles uh, away from the Earth. As you heard, uh, Ken Mattingly uh, has now uh, been given the go-ahead uh, to start his sleep period. Uh, this being the case, uh, we will uh, go over and recount uh, the activities uh, that have just taken place uh, regarding the uh, guidance and navigation system. It, uh, this activity was spurred uh, when uh, Mattingly uh, saw a, a gimbal lock warning light on board and a no attitude light on board. Uh, this was verified by the mission control team here on the ground. The uh, first step taken, the uh, IMU was course aligned uh, uh, to uh, to the spacecraft body. Uh, when when this occurred, uh, this uh, alignment uh, wiped out the uh, roll attitude in reference. The first step, uh, Mattingly uh, was given to go ahead to uh, unlock uh, the uh, platform uh, with ground procedures. Uh, and this allowed the platform to go inertial. Initially, uh, he uh, tried to align the platform with stars. He was unsuccessful with the platform alignment with stars, and this uh, primarily because of the debris around the spacecraft. As a next step, he then used the sun and moon uh, to align the platform uh, and uh, was very successful in this effort. Uh, then the platform was uh, tweaked in its alignment uh, using the stars. Uh, and uh, this was possible because the uh, platform uh, alignment uh, with the uh, initial planet reference uh, was good enough to use the auto optics. Uh, here in Mission Control, uh, uh, during this shift, uh, we will be playing the recorded data, and uh, this will be evaluated over the course of the shift. Uh, initially, it appears to be uh, uh, a transient uh, problem. We're at uh, 39 hours, uh, 33 minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, we show Apollo 16, 140,686 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity now 3,845 feet per second, and this is Apollo controlled Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 40 hours, uh, 35 uh, minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we presently show Apollo 16 at an altitude uh, of 142,978 nautical miles, uh, this from Earth, and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,779 feet per second. Uh, the crew is now uh, sleeping after a uh, flurry of activity uh, related uh, uh, to a uh, the uh, guidance and navigation system. Uh, Ken Mattingly... Uh, it appears went to sleep at uh, 40 hours uh, GET, dozed off to sleep. At an earlier time, uh, 38 hours, uh, 22 minutes, uh, ground elapsed time, uh, 
the uh, command module uh, had a gimbal lock warning and uh, no attitude uh, light on board. Uh, this was uh, verified by the flight controllers uh, here in the Mission Control Center. Uh, the uh, inertial measuring unit uh, had been course aligned uh, to the spacecraft body. Uh, uh, when uh, this problem developed, it uh, wiped out the uh, roll attitude reference. As the uh, first step, uh, Ken Mattingly, a command module pilot, uh, unlocked the uh, platform with uh, ground procedures, allowing the platform to go uh, inertial. A first attempt uh, by Ken Mattingly to align the platform using stars was unsuccessful because of the debris around the spacecraft. He then used the sun and moon as uh, references uh, to align the platform, uh, and this attempt uh, was very successful. As a uh, follow-on step, uh, Mattingly then tweaked the alignment uh, of the platform with, with the stars. He was successful in this second attempt because the platform uh, at this time was good enough to use the auto optics. Uh, there has uh, been very little conversation over the uh, flight control loop uh, here in the Mission Control Center uh, for the past uh, 30 to 40 minutes uh, during uh, this shift. Uh, the recorded data is being replayed uh, for a continuing evaluation. At uh, present, it appears uh, that uh, what we have seen is a transient problem uh, to the guidance and navigation system. Uh, it should be emphasized Ken Mattingly did uh, successfully uh, uh, realign the uh, inertial platform before it getting the go-ahead uh, to start his sleep period. A uh, confirmed failure of the IMU would give a no-go for LOI. Uh, however, at uh, this time, the uh, guidance and navigation platform is completely stable, and the ground control team uh, here in Mission Control uh, is satisfied. We're at uh, 48 hours, uh, 38, or 40 hours, uh, 38 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we will at this point uh, take down the, uh, the air to ground loop uh, because we expect uh, no further conversations with the crew. This is Apollo Controlled Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 41 hours uh, 30 minutes uh, into the mission. We presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 144,956 nautical miles away from Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 3,724 feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, no conversation with the crew of Apollo 16 uh, since our last report. The crew uh, is presently in their rest period. Our uh, flight director for this shift is uh, Phil Schaffer. It is his first stint in the, r the role of flight director. Until this mission, uh, Schaffer has worked as uh, flight dynamics officer in the uh, Mission Control Center. Uh, he's one of the new flight directors uh, designated uh, for the Skylab program. Our CAPCOM uh, for this shift is astronaut uh, Hank Hartsfield. He does not expect to have anything further to say to the uh, crew of Apollo 16 uh, this shift since our uh, countdown clock in the Mission Control Center shows uh, five hours, uh, 59 minutes of time remaining until wake-up time. Uh, this uh, will put the wake-up time about uh, two hours beyond uh, that called for in the flight plan. We're at uh, 41 hours, uh, 31 minutes into the mission, and uh, this is Apollo Controlled Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 42 hours, uh, 30 minutes uh, since liftoff. Uh, we presently show Apollo 16 at a distance of 147,092 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity... Uh, now shows uh, 3,665 feet per second. Uh, we've had no conversation uh, with the crew of Apollo 16 over the past hour. There are some five minutes uh, remaining on the uh, sleep period. We're at uh, 42 hours, uh, 30 minutes ground elapsed time, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 42 hours, uh, 32 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, we have a correction to our last report. Uh, sleepy commentator uh, reported uh, five minutes remaining on the sleep period uh, for the Apollo 16 crew. Uh, 
that should have been stated to five hours remaining. I repeat, to five hours remaining uh, of uh, crew sleep. We're at uh, 42 hours, 32 minutes uh, into the mission, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 43 hours, uh, 30 minutes uh, into the flight of Apollo 16. We now show the Apollo 16 spacecraft at a distance of 149,191 nautical miles away from the Earth, and uh, now traveling at a speed of uh, 3,608 feet per second. At the present time, the crew of Apollo 16 uh, is asleep. Also at the present time, the uh, Mission Control Center here in Houston is receiving periodic data uh, from the Apollo 16 spacecraft uh, due to an inability to switch antennas uh, by ground command. At uh, present, uh, here in Mission Control, we're receiving 11 minutes of data and uh, seven and a half minutes of data dropout. Uh, this uh, will become a troubleshooting uh, exercise uh, with the crew after the crew awakens. Uh, the uh, INCO uh, flight controller has uh, uh, tried uh, through uh, the Madrid and Carnarvon stations, uh, but uh, thus far has not been able to get in commands to switch antennas. Uh, this inability in antenna switching from the ground is why we're receiving the periodic data. The crew uh, will remain in their sleep period uh, for four more hours. At uh, 43 hours, uh, 32 minutes ground elapsed time, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 44 hours, uh, 30 minutes uh, into the mission. Uh, we presently show Apollo 16 at an, a distance of 151,216 nautical miles away from the Earth. Velocity now reads uh, 5,353 feet per second. Uh, Flight Director Phil Schaffer uh, has decided to update, update the uh, crew wake-up time uh, by one hour, uh, this being one hour earlier uh, because of the work day. Uh, this one hour will allow spare time for troubleshooting associated with the antenna switching. There uh, will be a change of uh, shift briefing at uh, 9.30 a.m. in the News Center briefing room. Participants uh, will include uh, Flight Director uh, Phil Chaffer and uh, Guidance and Control Flight Controller Gary Cohen. The uh, goal team of flight controllers headed by uh, Flight Director Jerry Griffin is scheduled to take over at uh, 46 hours of ground elapsed time. At the uh, present time, we show a uh, one hour uh, 50 nine minutes uh, from time of crew wake up. At uh, 44 hours, 31 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. 